Shalom, shalom, Israel. Most high Christ bless. Welcome to another rendition of 15 Minutes with the Captain. I'm Captain Neon. And I'm Officer Sirach. Shalom. All praises. Uh, today's topic we're going to go over is jealousy. I like jealousy. Jealousy, as we know, can take many different forms. All right? Take many different forms. All right? Let me read you the definition of jealousy. Okay? Jealousy. It says, uh, resentment against a rival. A person enjoying success or uh, advantage, etc. That's one. Two, mentally un uneasiness from suspicion or fear of rivalry, unfaithfulness, etc. All right. It says, as in love or aims. So it's, it's telling you that these are the different attributes of jealousy. All right. All right. What somebody perceives in their own mind, because remember one of them, the second one said suspicion. All right. To mean you see something or you suspect somebody of something, that's what forms in your mind to be taken as now you have jealousy towards that brother or sister. Correct. Correct. Correct? So let's start off, all right, in Romans 11, 11 and 11. All right. And this is the form of jealousy that's provoking you to righteousness like Paul was doing towards the uh, the Jews, all right? And then we go get to the, the other attributes that's not of God, all right? Let's read that. This is the book of Romans, chapter 11 and verse 11. Uh -huh. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, mm -hmm. but rather, though their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. So Paul is expressing to them now that the the, uh, the salvation has come to the Gentile because what he said, go to who? The southern kingdom first. But since they reject Christ, since they want to continue in the ways that they've been taught, all right, sacrificial, so on and so forth, the most I say provoke them to jealousy, all right? So then they can do what? Repent. Keep reading. Let's go say this. Verse 12, mm -hmm. now if they fall of them, be the riches of the world mm -hmm. and the diminishing of them, as you were, and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more they're faithful, they're fulfilled, their fullness. Right. So the world is speaking of is Israel, Isaiah 45, 17. So understanding it's all inclusive. That's what it's saying about Israel. Go ahead. For I speak to the Gentiles, mm -hmm. and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. Because that's what his office was, to go to who? The Gentiles. Paul went to the Gentiles. That's why he was able to uh, travel to Corinth, to Rome, to so on and so forth. Thessalonica, so on, these different places, because he had he was freeborn. He, he had the, and spoke different languages as well. The Most High gave him that office. All right, go ahead. Verse 14, uh -huh. if by any means I may provoke to emulation. So hold on right there. It says, but by, if by any means I may provoke to emulations, what the southern kingdom to emulate in good in righteousness, though. We're going to get into some wicked uh, examples of emulation under jealousy, all right, which is evil in, in the context we're going to read. But Paul is trying to provoke them to emulation to righteousness because the northern kingdom did what they started to believe on christ all right go ahead if by any means i may provoke them to emulation mm -hmm. them which are my flesh and might save some of them right so that's his job so his job was to go to who the northern kingdom the gentiles to do what get them to repent and to show the southern kingdom that you still have that same right to repentance, to salvation, if you do what? Repent and believe on Christ, all right? So now we're going to go through some different examples of our brothers, you know, just saying this truth, and in the scriptures, fighting and jockeying for positions, all right? Through jealousy, all right? Uh, let's go to 
First Maccabees, 155, 153. Because our forefathers, this, this, this spirit that's sort of upon our people of jealousy just didn't magically appear. All right? This has been going on for a long time. All right? Because our people, our brothers and sisters, see something that they want, which is another form of what? Covetousness. All right? All these key words go together. All right? Covetousness, uh, emulation, variance, uh, backbiting, all these different words are similitudes, or synonyms, rather, of jealousy, all right? And it all starts what? In your mind, all right? Go ahead and read that. It's the book of First Maccabees, chapter 5 and verse 53. And Judas gathered together those that came behind mm -hmm. and exhorted the people mm -hmm. all of the way through till they became unto the land of Judea. So this is Judas and his brethren, all right, that what? Are taking the people because what? They went through many wars. And we're going to read through other scriptures to where our brothers see other men that's in leadership positions and they covet those things. Remember, another attribute of jealousy, all right? Or jealous, being jealous of one, all right? Their positions, their ranks, the power that they may have, all right? Keep going. So they went up to Mount Zion with joy and gladness, mm -hmm. where they offered burnt offerings because not one of them were slain until they had returned in peace. See that? They, were, uh, uh, they overcame in battle, basically. Go ahead. Now, what time as Judas and Jonathan were in the land of Glad and Simon, his brother in Gal Galilee, Galilee, before Pontus, Ptolemy, to Ptolemus, Joseph, the son of Zacharias and Azarias, captains of the garrison, heard of the valiant acts and warlike deeds which they had done. So, jo Joseph and Azarias, yeah, Azarias, heard of the valiant acts of who? Jonathan, yeah, uh, no, Judas and his brother, all right? And he wanted to do what? Remember, let me read the word uh, emulate, the definition of emulate. It's an effort, uh, effort or desire to equal or excel others. Jealousy, rivalry. You see that? So this is a spirit that jumped on him. And brothers don't, at the time, understand or, or recognize, I'll say, that they have that spirit on them. Until it manifests itself. This is going to manifest itself with Joseph and uh, Azariah. Go ahead. Verse 57. Wherefore they said, let us also get us a name and go fight against the heathen that are round about us. You see that? So that's that vain glory spirit. That's that jealousy spirit. That's that emulation spirit. That's that rivalry spirit. All right. The Most High set up the men that he want to do his bidding. The men of power that he set up to go forth in battle, that's the men he set up. We as leaders, because all of us are leaders, but the Most High called every one of us in here at different times to be here for specific reasons at their appointed time, okay? But brothers through vain glory and learning a couple precepts, they think they got it. We're going to see. Go ahead. So when they had given charge unto the garrison that was with them, they went towards Jana. Then came Gorganus and his men out of the city to fight against him. Mm -hmm. And so it was that Joseph and Azarias were put to flight mm -hmm. and pursued unto the borders of Judea. And there and there were slain that day of the people of Israel about 2,000 men. You see that? So 2,000 men lost their lives based off of these men, these two men that wanted to get a name, that wanted to excel uh, uh, Judas and his brother. He wanted to say, oh, we can do better than that. I want to get a name just like them. The most high don't want you to have a name. You don't get a name based off of what you feel or how you think. 
You get a name because the Most High had prescribed you to be there at that time to participate in that act of war or whatever the case may be. Like we go out to war today, it's spiritual. All right. We, you got battles that, that us, we can name about that we've been to. All right. That we've been in. And then you have another brother come behind and say, oh, I can do better than that. That's the spirit of emulation. That's the spirit of jealousy. All right. Keep going. Verse 61. Mm -hmm. Thus was there a great overthrow among the children of Israel because they were not obedient unto Judas and his brethren. But though thought to do so some valid act. You see that? They always think in their own mind that they have a better, better, uh, better answer. I'm not going to li listen to the man the Most High set up, but I'm going to get with, with another brother that's like-minded. You, know? you see that too? Man, we, we can go do this and do that, right? right. Let, let's go make a name for ourselves. Let's go show Israel. We got, we got, we mighty too. Right. Uh, okay, you get 2,000 killed because you was disobedient. That's the thing. Brothers have to stop thinking and looking on their own way, but listen to the men the Most High set up. If you believe in the Most High, right? Believe in the order he set up, all right? Let's get another one. Let's go to uh, 1 Samuel 18 and 8. All right? That, that spirit of emulation, that spirit of, of uh, jealousy was on, on our forefathers. All right? Let's get another example of this. 1 Samuel 18 and verse 8. Yeah. This is the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 18 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. Well, start at 7. Start at 7. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. And the woman answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. So first off, you know, the women, as they do, they, they're given a, a, a comparison pretty much, right? When they're right. singing and joyful after they come back from war, because that's what happened when you read up above. And, and Jonathan give him his raiment and his, his robe, his sword, so on and so forth, praising him and his valiant acts that the Most High put upon David, the Spirit upon him to have this might to go be a man of war. Correct. You understand? Like, he, he didn't say, oh, I'm going to be a man. No, the Most High put that Spirit on him. All right? And the women are praising him, right? But now it's a Spirit that jumped on Saul now to now look at his brother as a competitor. All right? Emulation. Right. Okay, David loved Saul. You know what I'm saying? All right. That's the spirit he walked in. He didn't. He didn't do even through this whole uh, history of David and Saul. He never once lifted his hand to him. Right. Even though he had the chance to. That's called loyalty. All right. But the spirit was upon Saul to be jealous of what the Most High put forth in David. Go ahead. Keep reading. Verse eight. And Saul was very wroth, and the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but a thousand. And what can he have more but the kingdom? So he's like, dang, y'all pray to this man like that? Like, give him the kingdom. What else y'all gonna give him? You know what I'm saying? That's, that's his mindset. You know, but him not knowing, but yeah, he gonna be king the most. I put him forth to lead Israel. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's not about will. It's who the most high put for to lead the nation. All right, keep going. So that's the spirit that jumped on him of what? You for the city. Go ahead. And saw I, I, David, from the day, as you were, and saw I, David, from that day and forward. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul. And he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played with his head, with his hands, mm -hmm. as at another time. Okay, jump to 12. Verse 12. And Saul was afraid, and David, as you were, and Saul was afraid of David, because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. So it said, the Lord. Uh, Saul feared David because he knew that the Most High was with him. All right? This is the spirit that our brothers are in of jealousy when they see another man or in position, whatever the case may be, and they have power, per se, to command men 
as we read about David, he that feared him. Uh, he feared that brother. That now he's going to lose his position and David's going to take it. All right? And there's many more things you can touch on with that, but you're seeing now that he had an evil eye towards David. And that's another synonym going into what? To be jealous. Having an evil eye. Hatred towards your brother, your family. All right? Because of positions. Um, and going into suspicion. Go to Sirach 3 and 24. Sirach 3 and 24. Remember, and we read in the definition, it said mental, mental uh, uneasiness from suspicion or fear of rivalry. You see that? David was fearful that, okay, he have now somebody he competing against. Not David, but Saul. That's, what he, that's how he felt about David. Like they competing for Israel's praise. Like, no, we, can, we ain't competing, but we're doing the most high's work. Basically, at the end of the day, both of us together. But when you have that spirit of jealousy, it overshadows everything. You're not thinking clearly anymore. And your suspicions cause you to do what Seth Saul did. All right? Gave him his daughter, Michal, butcher her name, but so she could be a snare unto Saul. I mean, to David, I'm sorry. But she went, of course, she was barren because of her uh, wicked deeds, too. But read that. This is the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus, mm -hmm. chapter 3 and verse 24. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion, mm -hmm. and evil suspicion have overthrown their judgment. See, Saul wasn't thinking right. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't thinking to the point to, in the spirit, to say, the Most High is choosing this man. The Most High is behind him, giving him the power or the strength to do what? Go win these wars. Right. To go win against the Philistines and this, that, and the third. He gave him that power, that might. All right? So from there, uh, so go to Psalm 75. Psalm 75. So understanding, and you know, Saul understood this, but that spirit of jealousy came over him, you know? And when it when, when all different spirits jump on you, that's why you need your brother's death to help correct you, to help put you back in the spirit. All right? And that's what uh, David, when he played the the the, the, the harp, harp, yeah, yeah. Uh, he put him back in the spirit when he played the music. Yeah, right. I uh, read that seventy five right. and six. I'm sorry, it's the book of Psalms, chapter seventy five and verse six. Mm -hmm. For promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. So it's a promotion, promotion, meaning positioning. Men in order and structure come from who? The Lord. The Most High put those things in order. Put you in a position or a place that you need to be in at this set time. All right, go ahead. But God is the judge. Mm -hmm. He put it down one and set it up another. That's what happened in that matter with David, with Saul and David. He set it down one and put it up another. Okay? This is all of the Most High. He has his plan in how, in which he wants these things to be played out, all right? So let's touch on the woman for a second, all right? Because that spirit of jealousy can go from man and woman. It, it, it all plays, right. you know, a role, yeah. you know what I'm saying, in itself, all right, with all parties, male, male and female, all right? Let's go to Sarah 26 and 6. Sarah 26 and 6. Because we know sisters, you, you have that, that spirit to where you see another sister and you, you're jealous over her via... And just, I'm just saying it. You know, you may be jealous over her looks. Right. All right. You may be jealous over how she dresses, how, how she wrap how, how her, uh, her hair wrap. wrap her head, head wrap. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? You get jealous over foolish things. Right. But or uh, get deeper. You may be jealous over her husband. Her, her husband got rank. Yours don't. Whatever the case may be. It's, it's a lot of different ways that sisters in their head, the suspicion it conjure up evil. Yeah. Okay, read that. It's the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. But a grief of the heart and sorrow is a woman's, as you were, but a grief of the heart and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman. So it said, uh, read, it, read, read 5 real quick. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. There be three things that mine heart feareth. Mm -hmm. And the fourth, I was sore afraid. 
the slander of a city, the gathering together of an unruly multitude, and a false accusation, all these are worse than death. So it said all these worse than death. All right, go ahead. But a grief of heart and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman and a scorn of the tongue which communicated with all. Right, so it told you what's worse than those three things is a woman that's jealous over another woman. We in Israel, sisters, you can't roll in that spirit that, you know, every, everybody's not going to have everything. You know what I'm saying? It, it's not about keeping up with the Jones. It's about being comfortable in your own skin. All right? Everybody's made different. Got short, tall, fat, skinny, whatever. Everybody's made different. But sisters always seems to find those things, the carnal things, to be jealous of. All right? From there, uh, read... Uh, Proverbs 31 and 30. Proverbs 31 and 30. Because looks go fade. Looks will fade. Everything will start to droop. You go get old. Okay? But it's about having your own husband. You know what I'm saying? Presenting yourself, your body as a living sacrifice for Christ. All right? Read that. It's the book of Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 30. Favor is deceitful. Mm -hmm. And beauty is vain. But a woman that feared the Lord, she shall be praised. You see that? It said, but a woman that feared the Lord. It said, read the top part again. Favor is deceitful. It said, favor is deceitful because, you know, some sisters, they, they count on their beauty. You know right. what I'm saying? To be, be able to get certain favors and things of that nature. All right? Yes, sir. And it said, behind it, it said, beauty is vain. So it's telling you what, where that favor coming from, right. basically. Right? And then what's that latter part? It says... But a woman that feared the Lord, it the but a woman that feared the Lord, she shall be praised. It say, but a woman that feared the Lord. So that woman that feared the Lord, you, you're not going to catch her being a tailbound, a gossiper, a busybody in other people's business. All right, this woman gonna be of the Lord. She's not going to look at her sister in a in a mindset or the with the evil eyes, being jealous to her or what she have or whatever. Position she play in the body, things of that nature, whatever office she a part of, she go look at that sister and say, I can learn something from that sister. This sister can help show me some things that I'm lacking. You understand? That's the spirit that you sisters need to be rolling in. Correct. All right? Uh, let's go to uh, Exodus 20, 20 and 17. You go to one commandment only. Uh, because, again, yeah. brothers and sisters rolling this spirit too. Again, you, brothers and sisters, y'all got to be content with what the Most High bless you with. All right? The Most High brought y'all spirits, you, your husband and wife, y'all two spirits together to be twain, to be one flesh. Correct. All right? No more twain. Read that. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. So you can stop right there. It says, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. It say, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Same go for, vice versa for you women to these men, right? Right. Not coveting a, a, another woman's husband based off of what you think and how you feel. Right. Based off of your evil eyes towards your sister. All right? You shouldn't have this. You shouldn't be roaming this spirit. All right? I'm going to show you what spirit you should be roaming. Go to Timothy. 1 Timothy 5 and 13. All right, I'm going for the wrap it up because uh, the spirit of jealousy has ran rampant through all Israel to, from the, the dawn of time to today. All right, read that. It's the book of First Timothy, chapter 5, and verse 13. And withal, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle. But tattlers, tatter, right. also busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. So this is the normal attributes of somebody that's not in the spirit. They have a jealousy spirit, a covetous spirit, uh, all the stuff I read, uh, uh, emulation spirit. All these spirits are the same spirit that's on the men, it's on the women. All right, to excel 
one sister. All right, to oh she made unleavened bread. I can make unleavened bread better than her. All right, uh, sister, we all eat the same bread. All right, <laughs> stay in the spirit. All right, you're doing it for the Most High. You're not doing this for accolades. Right. The Most High say, let another man praise you. Let another sister praise you. You know what I'm saying? But because you are blind with that that covetous spirit and that jealousy spirit, you don't see what's right. You don't see that we all here for the same. Uh, cause same same one accord. All right, let's read that. Read again. Book of First Timothy, chapter five, verse thirteen. Mm -hmm. And with all they learned to be idle, mm -hmm. wandering about from house to house, and not only idle but tattlers, also in busy bodies mm -hmm. speaking things which they ought not. That's what it starts to turn into. Now, the spirit of jealousy jump on you, sister. Now you from. It was within. Now you got to do what? You have to go express that to other sisters. That's why I said wandering from house to house. Now you're going to this sister's house to that sister's house complaining. Because in your spirit, your own suspicions, you're jealous over another woman. You're jealous over what somebody else, the most I blessed them with. All right. Keep going. Keep reading. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. I will therefore that the younger women marry. Bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. So this is the spirit that you should be rolling in, sister. All right. If you're not married, you single, your job is it. The idle point is you being finding your hands to do something in the body. All right. Okay. Not gossiping and busy body and tattlers and this, that, and the third. You're showing a spirit of discourse. You're showing a spirit of uh, instead of unity, division. That's what you're doing. You're planting that seed going from house to house. And you have a whole bunch of bitter sisters that's jealous over other sisters for the start of tomorrow. All right. Okay? Uh, so it's telling you to get your own husband. All right? The younger women marry. You're not married. You're supposed to be learning Titus 3 up under the age woman. All right? Read, read uh, 15. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. 4. Some are already turned aside after Satan. You see that? Satan had already got a hold of you because you allowed him into your space. You didn't put on an armor of righteousness. You didn't put on a whole armor of God, which is the Bible. Right. You put on your lust. And that lust got you committing adultery with another man's husband. And now you're in all manner of sin. Last precept, Hebrews 13 and 5. In this truth, in this walk, we all must be content with what the Most High gave us. All right? And these are, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, antonyms, right? I mean, the opposite of jealousy is to be what? Comfortable, right? Uh, and content. All right? So read that. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Right. So he's telling you, because the first verse above that, it say marriage is honorable. But whoremongers is adultery, God will judge. He's telling you to be comfortable. Be content in what the Most High bless you with. Right. Your spouse that the Most High bless you with, it said, Christ said, let no man put a son. All right. Yes, sir. So, brothers and sisters, I pray y'all got something from this class. Uh, meditate on these things, all right? And get that spirit of jealousy off of me. It's not of Christ. All right, what do you say? Shalom. Most high Christ bless you. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.